Okay, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna disassemble a Dell uh, Inspiron D630. Um, they fuck up all the time, and because they're old now, they were big years ago, but now the motherboard's go. And if you want to get a good laptop, they're, they're not bad. They usually get a lab, you know, motherboard for about 40, 50 bucks, and you need to get a laptop if you get a broken one of these, so. Gotta take the battery out. Okay. And you gotta take the hard drive out. Usually the screws are here and here. Take that bad boy out. Take the hard drive out. Put it over there. And you gotta take the RAM out. There's a little Phillips screwdriver right here. The little, the little trunk lid opens up. These little clips are here like this. And the RAM tips up and comes out. And you set that aside. Alright. And you take now the end screws are for the hinge for the display and the rest are for the back. Alright. Take that out. All the screws are pretty much the same except for the hinge ones on the back. So you know the short ones are for the hinges and the rest of them are for the back. Alright, do 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 do. And you know, if you notice, I magnetize my screwdriver, so uh, I pull the screws out easy. Makes life so much easier. I mean, it's effing ridiculous to do without the uh, magnetized screwdriver. Um, the trick, if you do, you can actually buy them magnetized. Um, Stanley makes some ones that are pretty affordable. These are ones I had. These are snap-on ones. You just take a magnet from a hard from a hard drive, and you know you get that sucker you know, where it's got plenty of charge. And if you notice, all right, these are pretty cool. You know, static is always a concern when working with these things. The trick is to not move around. Don't be a schmuck, you know. Don't be, you know, scuffing your feet on the floor and, you know, just charging enough static from your finger to zap these things, you know. It's freaking ridiculous. All right. And flip this over like this. And you open it up. I got to find... Where's my thing? Where's my thing? All right, here's my thing. All right. Basically... You just, oh, I fucked up the key over there. That's all right. I got another keyboard. All right. And yeah, basically, oh, oh, bumped the camera. All right. And, uh, oh, God, I can't find that thing. Where's my thing? I got to find it. It's around here somewhere. I know it. Ridiculous. You're losing shit all the time. And, you know, God, can't believe it. All right, this will work. You notice I messed up those keys. I think these were messed up anyway. Alright. And all you gotta do to get the keyboard off, you pry on this side right here, you pop it up, and then... Wow, it sounds like somebody freaking glued this thing! Holy crap! Alright. Pull it out of here. Just rip it out. Rip it! Rip it. Okay, you can take that out. And we got three screws that hold in the keyboard. Alright. Quick. Do, 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 do. These are short. Do, 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 do. I got a buttload of these things laying around. I had like 40 of them. And I sold most of them. A couple of them were bad. I don't really care about this keyboard, but. See, this freaking key was broken the whole time. I know I didn't just break that down. It's ridiculous. Alright, now these kind of have a weird thing. It's the only one I've ever seen like this. Is that it has this little keeper that holds this ribbon in it. It's just, it really just secures the ribbon. I usually lose these freaking things and they never go back in because, because, all right? Then there's this little wire thing. It pulls like this and it pulls that plug right up. Like that. And we throw the key. All right, so, okay, here we go. Next thing, there's three key, there's three screws to hold this top piece on. All right? But first thing we got to do... You want to take out your display. Uh, this is for the for the screen. That's here and here, here and over here. See? All right. So we're gonna take this one out first. All right. Remember, these are shorter than the rest of them. So we got those aside for the display. Now this display is loose. It can fall out. Well, via the hinges anyway. 
Alright. Okay, yeah, then what we do is flop this for baby oil like this. Alright. And you gotta disconnect the stuff basically for the display. Which is some of the uh, wireless card interfaces. And these guys that go down to another thing that is never in place. It's just kind of a dummy wire and gotta do something with it and take the black one out of its little track. You see that? Yeah, right. Now these things are kind of fragile. You don't want to mess with them because you can, when you're trying to put them back on, you can squish them and F them up really bad and we don't want to do that. Alright, but you just want to, you know, just kind of gently pry them away and they pull off. You can just yank them off, but, you know, I'm just trying to show you to be gentle with the freaking things. I mean, you know, just pretend like you're playing with a little puppy and you don't want to hurt it, you know? Alright. We can take this ram out. You pull these little guys off like that, comes right out. Alright. And, whoa, keep knocking the camera, my God, it's going to be like, give people a stroke when they watch this thing. It's not good. Alright. Pull the video display, it comes over, just like the one we had over here, the video cable, it comes in right here, it's got a little, little thingy on it, it pulls right off. Like this, like that. Alright. Then we can pull these guys out here. This one. This one is never attached to anything, but they put this little condom on it so that it doesn't ground out again stuff and screw everything up. That's what happens. Alright, you want to pull this guy out like that. Here, see? Now, if you notice, we got all the wires, and we can actually just lift up on the display like that. It comes right out. See? His little feet. It's pretty cool, actually. Alright. So now. We gotta take the three main screws off to take the top off. Alright. We forgot to take the CD ROM drive. I can't believe it. Alright. The CD ROM is a screw screwsly secures it right here. And you push this little guy in there, and then you pull the whole drive right out. Just like that. It's like an old A track tape. I don't let any anybody watching this you probably didn't even know what a goddamn A track tape is. Alright, here we go. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the three screws out. There's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. All right. And again, you really gotta love working with these magnetized screwdrivers. The key is when you put this back together is you hope you don't have too many air left over screws because then, you know, the fans are gonna make noise and, okay, actually this one only really has one fan. It's over here, we can't even get to that yet. All right. Now this is the part that always scares me a little bit because see, these are secured. The, there's like tabs across the front they have to snap out and sometimes those suckers are really tight when you pull it apart they, psh, they sometimes break so you want to kind of be careful so I like to start on this one I just like to start from the back like this and you just kind of pull it away with your fingers like that and get it started and you pull it up oh I forgot there's a couple more really, really uh, these two screws here these are so with these screws, you got to be remember, they don't come all the way out. These are the one that's right there by the hard drive bay there. All right. And what you're going to do is you're going to take these guys out like this. Because the top won't come off unless you take these off. All right. Now, there's like a little keeper on the back of those things so these screws don't come off. So once they start flopping, you know they're out. Okay. And you go like this. And you want to pull this apart. All right. So it kind of pops. It's a little scary. What you gotta remember is there's also the little um there's a little battery plug right here, and that's for now the clock is gone. When we plug this thing back in, since this is the battery that was holding the clock uh, active and everything, now it thinks it's like 19 whatever whenever the year it was made usually it thinks it is, and it usually thinks it's like January 1st midnight. All right. Well, we just erased all this, all the settings and everything when we popped that battery out. Okay, it's, like I said, this always freaks me out a little bit because you gotta give, it seems like you gotta give a lot of force to get some of these off. Like this one's binding up on this side, so I'm gonna work around on the other side to, so that I can get to it, right? Always freaks me out a little bit. Alright, and I got it. I find out all just went and then it's free. 
right? The battery's held in there. You can snake that out of there. I just leave that in place because we're actually replacing a defective motherboard. What happens is the, the these get hot. And what happens is there's a video uh, card that's internal on the board that fries. And then you can't see nothing. You turn the thing on and they don't see anything. And so you got to change that out. And so that's what we're doing today is we're, we're removing the motherboard so that we can replace it. Okay? All right. Now there's actually four screws that hold on the top. This is the heat sink for the processor. The processor is right under there. This is a pretty good one. This is a 2.2 uh, Intel dual core. It's actually a nice processor. They work really good. They actually personally handle heat really well, even though their friends don't. Their friends can't handle the pressure the way they can. All right, so, all right, let's see if this one, oh, that one doesn't fit there. All right, anyway, let's do this. I'm gonna take that processor heat sink off, all right? You know, there's actually numbers on these one, two, three, and four. So that's actually to tell you when you're reassembling it, which order to screw it down in. If you notice, they come up very easy because, you know, this isn't like some snowblower engine. It doesn't need to be really, really tight. This has to be finger tight. You know, I go finger tighten and just, eh, just a little bit. Because you don't want to break the thing. I mean, my God. You know, you take these off. So they, you hear them kind of snap back. Because these are kind of spring-loaded. This is kind of cool. And binding up a little bit. Finding out which screws hold holding this bag. Yeah, come on. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. All right. This one's off. That one's off. Dun, dun, dun. All right, the one number two. Get that. All right, now it's free. I want to just lift that out of there. If you notice, it's got some goop on there. I use a, like a ninety percent, um, uh, a ninety percent alcohol, and usually we'll clean that right off. Get this nice and clean, so it looks. When you're putting it back together, again, that should be perfectly clean. You should also do the same to the processor. And then what you're going to do is you're going to put that, that silver stuff on there, the heat sink paste. You're going to put like a half of what would be like a half a grain of uncooked rice right there. And, you're, and then it's going to be all the stuff you're going to need. Now, if the processor has gone bad itself, you usually see it gets very discolored. When you get this cleaned down, it'll be like really, really purple. Sometimes it'll even burn. It's pretty cool. This one actually looks okay. It's going to be all right. All right, so we set this guy aside. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the processor. processor's got a little tiny set screw there. And you actually just have to turn that. And... See, this one might be too big. Nope, this is good enough. You just turn it. All right, so come on. All right. It's like that. See, the whole thing went because all the pins are being squished by the two things when I was like that. And you can actually just lift that right out. And if the processor's gone bad, you're going to see like little pock marks or little burns and stuff in here. Where it just went, ah, freak the fuck, even freak the hell out, you know? And I like to set that aside, okay? All right. Now, i got to take this. This is something that's hardly ever used anymore. This is what's called a PC MCIA slot. And it used to be used for like modems and uh, sometimes they would have extra USB ports that would go in here and all kinds of stuff. And this one, you just pull up on the ribbon, pull that away. You got the speaker. Speaker's not secured by any screws on this particular model, but it does have a plug. You want to take that off? Take that guy off and you set that aside. All right. Now, there's only four screws that hold on here. There's, to hold this whole thing in place, there's four screws. You don't have to take every screw you see out. Don't be an idiot, right? Okay, so you take your four screws out, and you also have to take these little posts out for for the uh yeah the, i know you kids don't even know what this is this is a serial board because they don't use it anymore except for maybe some old switches some old cisco switches might still use that interface i mean this is a vga this is so you can hook this thing up to like a monitor you have to take these guys out and the four screws and it'll come right out all right so let's do the four screws the four screws are over here oh, i'm sorry yep no that's not the one okay so it's here here, here, and here. And then the thing will lift right out. All right, once we get those guys out. Okay, so we're going to take these out. These are going to be like the monitor ones. They're going to be the same screws. 
I'm getting confused. It's okay. The threads and the depth and everything is exactly the same if you mix it up. Oh, that's not the one. You always mess up on that one. One, two, three, and the one over here. And four. The reason why I'm doing these videos is because I found them in the early stages to be a pain in the butt. But you know what? After you've done a few of them, they, they go pretty fast. They go pretty fast. I would actually be going faster right now if I had a little more coffee and I wasn't stopping to talk to you nice people. All right? Now, these are going to require some kind of a tool. All right? So I'm going to pause my tape and I'm going to go get a tool and take those out and then and I'll be right back.